It's an honor to share communion with you today. I'm working from my book, Do This in Remembrance of Me, One Year Communion Devotional. This is week 26, God's Mind is Full. The minds of men are occupied and preoccupied with many things. Predominantly, people are preoccupied with themselves. Their minds are a perpetual selfie. Paul made reference to this in the book of Philippians, uh, 2, 20 through 21, New Living Translation. I have no one else like Timothy who genuinely cares about your welfare. All the others care only for themselves and not for what matters to Jesus Christ. People are generally wrapped up in their own affairs. A mind that is full of self is a very small package. Narcissism is an epidemic that is leaving a sick society in its wake. People who are narcissistic are extremely self-centered with an overblown view of their self-importance. As we partake of communion today, we need to do so with this in mind. According to the scriptures, God's mind is full as well. So what's on God's mind? Number one, his covenant. Psalm 111.5, he has given food to those who fear him. He will be ever mindful of his covenant. His covenant is his agreement with man, blood, is the silent adjective that describes his covenant with man. This covenant is signed with the pen of Jesus' sacrifice and the ink of his blood. We relate to God through this covenant. We know what belongs to us by filling our minds with God's word. The covenant contains the promises of God and the conditions. We're responsible for meeting the conditions. God is responsible for watching over his word to perform it. Is your mind full of God's covenant? 1 Chronicles 16, 15. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. The word of God is his GPS, God's positioning system. He, his word enables us to navigate in zero visibility. See, pilots who enter into the condition of zero visibility can fly by instruments. Those instruments become their eyes. They trust those instruments to get them to their destination. And we live in a world with zero visibility. Those who live only by their five physical senses are operating in zero visibility. They don't know if they're going straight up or straight down. They don't have any bearings in life. They could be nose diving unaware. When our minds are filled with his covenant, we are flying by the most reliable instruments that exist. We will surely arrive safely at our God-assigned destinations in life. God's promises and the God kind of life await us. God's mind can be filled with more than one thing at the same time. What else occupies his mind? Number two, you. Psalm 8, 3 through 4. When I view and consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained and established, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of earth-born man that you care for him? Have you ever had a song stay on your mind for a while? We are God's composition. We are the song on his mind. We can and should also have his songs on our minds. The lyrics of these songs are already penned in the Bible. The title of the song is The New Covenant. There are many subtitles to this song. They include, I'm saved, healed, delivered, and free. By his stripes I was healed. He has borne my sicknesses and carried my diseases. I'm justified by his blood. Healing those who are oppressed by the devil. He became a curse for me and redeemed me from the curse of the law. I'm no longer under the dominion of poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. Through one man's obedience, I was made righteous. <laughs> Some of us have our minds on the wrong songs. Our minds are filled with the wrong lyrics. These songs are on the devil's hit parade. His top 40 hits include, The flu season is here. Don't forget your transgressions. God doesn't exist. This is your lot in life. You aren't worthy of a good life. Healing passed away with the apostles. You are guilty, guilty, guilty. Has God said? And as the accuser, his biggest hit is the blood has lost its power. No, the blood never has, never does, and never will lose its power. The blood of Christ still has the power to remit our sins. 
The blood still has the power to justify us and declare us free from guilt. The blood still has the power and the value for our redemption. The blood still has the power to purchase the lost because he purchased the church with his own blood and redeemed us from a life of fruitless and worthless behavior. The blood of Christ still gives us bold access into the holiest, God's throne room, a place that was off limits to us based on our own merit. The blood speaks of God's mercy and this author, is a living testimony of his mercy. There's no reason a man in my past history and behavior and my character flaws should have had a relationship with God. But by his mercy, he saved me. Now I'm saved by his grace and I'm his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. I'm his handiwork. I'm his per masterpiece. I'm his personal achievement. What song's going through your head? Whose songs are you singing? Like God, we should be ever mindful of his covenant. God is ever mindful of his covenant. He is ever mindful of you. And he's ever mindful of, number three, his word. He's watching over his word to perform it. Jeremiah 1.12, God's word translation. Then the Lord said to me, Right, I am watching to make sure that my words come true. One translation says, I will hasten my word to perform it. To hasten means to be on the lookout and to be sleepless. So we need to be ever mindful of his word and believe his word rather than the circumstances and the songs of the enemy. Today, we will partake of two elements, the cup, which represents the blood of the new covenant, his blood that was shed for the remission of our sins, and the bread, which represents his sacrifice of his physical body on the cross of Calvary, where he became our substitute. He became sin that we might be made righteous. He carried our guilt and shame so that we could be free from condemnation. He lifted and removed our sicknesses and diseases so that we might be healed. Fill your mind with these thoughts and partake of communion with expectation. Father, we thank you, God, that your mind is full of your covenant, that your mind is full of us and full of your word. We thank you, God, you watch over your word to perform it. We come and partake by faith today the bread which represents your body broken for our healing, and the cup which is the blood which was shed for the remission of our sins. We stand complete in you, and we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, let's partake together. <laughs>